There's a lot of information that we can get on Alzheimer's disease today yes. uh, because we know we've we've Dr. isolated Google. we've isolated um, three markers for early onset as well as um, some people choose to get screened to see if they have the APOE4 um, variant right um, in their genetics. Can you make sense of all of this for us in terms of where genetic testing is and where it's getting and, and talk to us a little bit fr from the reference point from a patient. What, right. what should they know? So um, the three rare ones, the APP, PS1, PS2, are so rare, uh, I only ever even think about drawing them in people who are very young, 40s and 50s, who are coming in with the progressive dementia. But those people, the ones who have those rare mutations, usually also have a very rich family history, generation after generation after generation. So if they don't have a rich family history, I won't even think about drawing them. Those thankfully represent, I think I've seen one every five years, one every 10 years, so it's not very common. Wait, but, before you go on, so is it possible to have early onset Alzheimer's and not have one of those three variants? Theoretically, yes. Okay, but in your case, have you seen people? I've seen one case that did not have one of those three mutations. Right. No, check that, two cases. So two, one came to autopsy, one is about to come to autopsy, unfortunately. And so out of those cases, th those are the only people who you know in your Absolutely practice? Absolutely know that I drew those, those autosomal dominant markers and they were negative, but they clearly had an, an, a progressive dementia, young onset, they will progress to autopsy. In both cases, we got their brains, or one we got the brain, one we're going to get the brain. So. So we may discover index cases of new mutations. If you are someone who has been or thinks you may be a candidate for this disease, um, how important is the genetic component? So the genetic component from those rare conditions is not, unless you have you know the family histories, the ones that this Columbia South America people that the Banner people are doing. That's well described, but that's a rare thing outside of those families. Um, but APOE genotyping was first. Uh, described by Dr. Corder and Roses in 1993 in the journal Science. Um, and it, over time, has held up a, over hundreds of studies suggesting clearly it's a correct and accurate finding. And what has been the, the controversy in the field is, should we go out and get tested? Uh, I think that people are in agreement that in general we would not recommend testing of people who do not have symptoms, even if it runs in their family. In general, we, most people don't get genetic genotype. Most physicians, my peers, don't genotype for people who are having symptomatic dementia or mild cognitive impairment. I do, but I'm not in the majority on that particular aspect. So this new thing is that 23andMe started to test people without genetic, uh, disclosing their genetic information without any genetic counseling required. That's a new change. This is in the last two months. I'm not sure we have kind of thought this through all the way to its logical conclusion, and we'll take some time to figure that out. Do I recommend at this point, would I recommend a person like you to go out and get tested? No. Right. Even, what if you have definite, like you're failing all of the cognitive testing? Well, then you're becoming symptomatic, in which case then you should think about it. And that's what these large registries are trying to, to call people who are like, nah, they're starting to slip. Some people are not even aware they're slipping until they're really slipping. Right. And that's what they want to do is flag those people and track them over time. What about using a scan as a diagnostic tool? I mean, we know there's a presence of um, beta amyloid plaque in brains long, long before um, some people show symptoms. So, right. so it's 20% at age 60, 40% by age 80 are normal asymptomatic people who are amyloid PET positive. So is that a good way to go in future for to diagnose people because some, some of these people will never have the symptoms of Alzheimer's right yes that is true but uh, it is like an APOE it's a, a a4 carrier it is clearly a risk factor the people who are more likely to get worse over time are Apo amyloid pet positive than amyloid pet negative so there is like APOE it's a risk factor um, should we recommend it routinely probably not Will we get to a point where we're recommending something else as a proxy test? I think that we're clearly headed in that direction. What that proxy test is has not been settled upon. When you first make a diagnosis, um, what are some of the lifestyle changes you feel like are essential in order to perhaps prevent the onset of Alzheimer's disease? 
So those are separate issues because uh, if I'm making a diagnosis, that means they're symptomatic. Yes. And what I recommend for a symptomatic person is different from what I recommend from, say, the adult child of a symptomatic person. Okay, so, so give me both scenarios. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for, um, for the asymptomatic people, the people who are the adult child, because they often come in with their adult child, who are asking me, oh my gosh, am I next? I would say to you, engage in wellness starting today. Don't wait till you're symptomatic because we know the brain changes start 20 years. Wellness starts today. You have to exercise, you gotta eat right, you gotta manage your, your uh, health conditions, you gotta do mentally stimulating activities. You gotta do it all, you can't just do one thing. To the symptomatic person, I say, um, Alzheimer's is a treatable disease, we're gonna do everything we can to stop it. We'll talk about diet and, and health as part of the whole treatment spectrum. The data's not as good in the, treat, in the treatment using diet to treat Alzheimer's as it is in the prevention space. Um, and then we'll talk about whether a ketogenic diet might make sense or not. Treatable diet, I, sorry, treatable disease though. Treatable disease though without a cure, right? Like yes. I think that's important to differentiate. So, Alzheimer's is in our generation what diabetes and HIV was a generation ago and cancer was two generations ago. We never cured diabetes. We did not cure people of HIV either. We meant them from, we took all of those from terminal diseases to chronic disease. Alzheimer's dementia, will, that will happen in our lifetimes. We'll make it from a terminal disease to a chronic disease. The idea of curing it is probably one or two generations away where you take it out as if it was never there. Great, thanks.